While I'm doing my afternoon word jumbles, I hear the mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. The nice mail person slides a couple of letters in a large yellow envelope through the slot. It takes a couple of tries for them to get it in. Ayo. Hey, my coupons. What a coincidence. I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm. I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Amanda? She yells through the door. What? I have something for you. Oh my god, is it her college forms? <gasps> I'm kind of busy right now. Can you come back later? Okay, just thought you'd want this big old envelope we got from HIA. All right. Immediately, Amanda pushes her door open. Horn Institute for the Arts? I mean, if you're busy, I can come back. Yeah. Father, please. I hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. That's probably bad for your teeth. It's probably not the most efficient way to do it, but okay. She doesn't seem to hear me and spits out a piece of envelope. She pulls out a letter and unfolds it. Ah. And... <sighs> the suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. Oh my god, please. Amanda's face is unreadable. <gasps> Lady Gaga would be jealous. That poker face. Ooh. I can't believe this. Oh, she got in, didn't she? Oh, honey, it's okay if you didn't. Yes. I got in! <gasps> oh! I got in! Amanda tosses a letter aside and gives me a big hug. Oh my god, I am so happy and proud of you. I knew you could do it. Congrats, sweetie. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god, I really can't believe I got in. Well, of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed that interview, and your photography is incredible. Oh. Wait, Dad. Mm. I know this one's really expensive, and it's so far away. I think for a moment. HIA was one of the more expensive schools that Amanda applied to, but I know she's had her heart set on it for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we're gonna make it work. Mm? Really? Of course. Amanda hugs me again. Yes. Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie, we're celebrating tonight. Dinner. Your choice, wherever you want. <laughs> wherever? Amanda and I walk along the bayside, tearing into our foil wrap burritos from a nearby food truck. You could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Cost was not a determining factor. Blech. Please, Dad, you know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a burrito with a view. Nice. Can't say that I'm mad. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch ships sail lazily through the bay. Yeah. And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes, and there are all these galleries nearby, and there's a discount if you bring your student ID, and... Amanda, slow down. You're gonna joke on your burrito. I know, I'm just excited. Did I mention that students get their own studio space once they're seniors? And we get all the professional photo editing software for free? Oh my god, that's so nice. It's nice to see Amanda so enthusiastic about HIA, but I wish she wouldn't do it between bites of her burrito. I thought I taught her to chew with her mouth closed. I wonder who my roommate's gonna be. You take an online survey and they match you with someone with a similar major and interests. I bet we're gonna be best friends. Craig and I were. A good roommate can be a lifelong friend or boyfriend. But don't even get me started on bad roommates. Hmm. Oh no. I'm just kidding. We didn't have a bad roommate. Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig brought home one night. Oh my god, yes! We spent a semester fabricating a story about our new foreign exchange student who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. Beautiful. <laughs> Carl ruled. Oh, they let you have animals in the dorms if you get a note saying you need one. I bet I could forge one. I think I'd get a rabbit. Maybe a snake. Maybe both. Would the snake eat a rabbit, though? 
Oh boy. I think I'll leave that all up to you. She's so excited. I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to be real for a second. So, you know I had that talk with Mr. Vega. Hmm? He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? No, but you just did. What? No. Huh? I don't want to put a damper on good news, but I need you to knock it out of the park these last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to Horns, we need that scholarship money. I know you can do it. Okay. I promise I'll try harder. Oh, Amanda. I pat her on the back. Think you can handle a 14 hour drive to come home for the holidays? There's gonna be some treacherous ice roads to cross. And don't get, even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. Well, it'll be worth it if I get to see you. Oh, that's so sweet, my daughter. My eyes immediately well up with tears. Hmm. Oh, Dad, don't cry. Sorry, I'm just very, very proud of you. You're all grown up now, and you're such a good person, and I hope you know how important you are to me. Oh, this is so wholesome, I can't handle it. <laughs> Dad, stop. You're gonna make me cry, too. It's too late, honey. It's happening. <laughs> Dad, I can't get tears in my burrito. It's gonna make it taste sad. Or salty. Salty's good. I pull Amanda in for a hug and kiss her on her forehead. <laughs> Love you, kiddo. Love you too, Pops. Don't use metal utensils. Welcome. Oh, okay. You've got dads. They just say you. Oh, Matt messaged me. Well, hello. Hey, Lewis. What are you... your feelings about poker? Beyond hardly knowing her. Poker? I hardly know her. There it is. Well, good talk. Wait, I actually like poker. I just saw the joke and I had to take the shot. Please, Matt, I'm a dad. I'm contractually obliged. No, no, I get that. Anyway, we've been playing weekly poker games and I figured I should send you an invite your way. That sounds great. I love losing money. Cool, dude. See you soon. Lose that money. Oh, I'm so torn because I know I was just saying I kind of want to be there for Joseph, but I really like Craig and Matt too. And now Matt's inviting me to do something and I feel like this would be a great date, but also lose that money. Normally I'd be down to carelessly spend my money, but also Amanda just got into college. Like, don't we need to start saving? <sighs> you know what? You know what? Not many people are inviting us out. We'll have a day of celebrating and then we'll get serious. Lose that money. Also, in the comments section, if there's a certain dad you want us to really start dating and pursuing, let me know which daddy is your dream daddy and that you want Igluis to pursue. Cause I'd be happy to go on a date with them. <laughs> Matt invited me to a poker night at Joseph's house. I put on my going out coat and walk over at Joseph's house. Oh, scandalous. No. Across the way, I spot Matt, who's walking over from his own house. He's got a case of beer under his arm. Crap, I should have brought something. Hey. Hey, man. Crap, I should have brought something. <laughs> no worries, man. It's your first time. Just bring a full wallet. How long have you guys been at this for? Whoops, forgot to read that. Apparently for years. Okay. We pass through the fence enclosing Joseph's backyard. Craig, Brian, and Joseph hover around the patio, drinking beer and chatting. Robert sits in the corner, brooding as usual. Hmm. Hey, Lewis, glad you could make it. Oh. So am I. I'm psyched to take all your money. Just like old times. Craig's the resident shark. We prefer the term person who's good at poker. Well, I'm aware. Craig's always been suspiciously good at poker. Hmm. Are you still as terrible as you were in college? Poker face. 
Hey, I wasn't terrible. I'm not bad at poker. I'm definitely good at poker. Mm. Everyone stares at me. Okay, maybe that was a little defensive. Okay, I'm bad at poker. Mm. There's no way you're as bad as Joseph. Joseph shrugs. Mm. This is basically my tit thing. I'm giving back to the community. Wink. Tithing. Tithing. Plus, I'm happy to just sit here and eat all of Brian's snacks. Uh. Guess who brought pigs in a blanket? Mm. Not Craig. Mm. Hey, my chia seed and granola energy balls are just as delicious. Mm. <laughs> Everybody laughs. Let's get the game going. Oh, wait, wrong person, but close yeah. enough. We all take a seat at the table. Matt starts dealing cards. The first couple rounds go by easily, as I'm getting the hang of things. But it's obvious that Craig is running the show here. Craig, how did you get so good at this? It's pretty easy. You just start getting a feel for everybody's tell. Like, Matt will scratch his ear. Oh. Hey. Brian adjusts his pants when he's trying to lie. <laughs> now wait a second. And I think you just loudly announce to the whole room when you have a good hand. Yep, yep, that's me. <laughs> What's Joseph's tell? <laughs> everything. <laughs> Literally everything. That man is an open book. He couldn't lie if he tried. Well, at least I have God on my side. See, you can't even say that with a straight face. What about Robert? Hmm. Dots. Honestly? The man's an enigma. Robert raises his glass of whiskey to us in a solemn salute. Mm -hmm. I think he'd wipe the floor with us if he actually tried. Mm -hmm. I'm just here because I enjoy the company. Robert pulls out his phone and stares at it. <laughs> Robert, is that a flip phone? Oh my god, yes, Robert. Yeah. Hey. What, are you a drug dealer now? Oh. Yeah, what do you need? Horse, speed, Tawana Johnny's? I can get you the street stuff easy, but if you're looking for something exotic or designer, that's maybe 72 hours in a favor called. Maybe I won't need you today. Maybe I won't need you tomorrow. But someday. Oh, I don't really... I think I'm good. Right. But still, if you got the coin, I got the goods. Dots. I dropped my phone in the toilet, and this is a backup until I can get it replaced under warranty. You know, I once got offered an apartment complex because I had two cell phones for about a year, just as I was adjusting moving to a new country. And so I had, like, an American and Canadian phone. And, yeah, a guy made a joke about how I was a dr like, asking, asking if I was a drug dealer. I was like, oh, no, and I explained my situation. He was like clearly didn't believe me he was like okay wink well if you want you can have access to the garden in the back and then offered me the apartment and i was like jesus christ i did not take the offer i should have everyone murmurs their sympathies we've all been there we go back to playing i really gotta stop eating these pigs in a blanket pigs in blankets i don't know but they're very good i think there might be cheese in them Hmm. Nice touch. Oof. Don't know if I got enough to raise you on this round. You can always bet your firstborn. Joseph, you keep saying mildly kind of weird things. Don't get it wrong, I like it. I just don't expect it. Well. If you think you can handle another one, be my guest. Briar and Hazel are a handful, to say the least. Buddy, you think three kids is a handful? Try four. I'm operating at 100% dad capacity at all times. Hmm. Actually, it's technically five. 
Uh, with his wife? Or are they expecting? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Christine saw a commercial for one of those dolls that poop and won't stop asking for it. We ended up getting it for her birthday, but sh she's so grossed out by the fake baby poop that she makes me change its diapers. So now I'm changing the real baby and the fake baby. Wow. Uh. There's just a lot of poop in my household right now. <laughs> Daisy got one of those a while back. One night I walk in on her after she tried to take the doll apart to see how the poop mechanism worked. But then she cut back together and started crying. Poop everywhere. Hey. Fake poop. But still. That reminds me of... Wait, do we all have poop doll stories? <laughs> Everyone nods in agreement. Hmm. Guys, I really don't need any more poop in my life than there is already. Can we just get back to poker and not talk about poop? Nice. Matt deals another hand and we quickly forget about the poop. We all run out of pigs of a, pigs and blankets, so we switch over to Craig's healthy snack food. It actually isn't terrible. Hey. These kale chips are phenomenal. We should sell these at the coffee shop. Oh. It's my own recipe. I'd be happy to give it to you guys. Hey. I can see it now. Pierce the kale. <laughs> Chips. Hmm. Dots. Hey. Pierce the Veil is a popular post hardcore screamo band out of San Diego. Oh, where are they out of San Diego? Didn't know that. We all look at Matt, confused. Oh, man. It's, uh, maybe not any of your wheelhouses. Hmm. Hey. How's the shop nowadays? Hey. Busy as ever. I'm toying with the idea of hiring on another person to work the counter. But I haven't found a good candidate. Maybe it could be Amanda. Hmm. Hey. If Amanda's looking for a summer gig, let me know. Yo! That's really nice of you. But I think she's been burned too badly by coffee shops before. Literally, not figuratively. Hey. Matt Cox is head to the side. I'll ask her, though. We get down to the final hand of the night, and it's Craig in the lead by a landslide. Joseph has long since lost all of his chips and has taken to tidying up, refusing any help from the rest of us. Brian deals us all cards. So what's it gonna take for Robert to give a damn on this round? Robert looks up from his half-empty glass of whiskey. Do you really want to unleash the beast? Huh? Well, now I'm curious. I got a long history of being a gambling man, but I'll only do it if you make it interesting. None of this penny chip nonsense. I got a Lily's 18 year single blend sitting in my closet right now. Was saving it for when River turns 21, but I'm willing to put it up as collateral. Hey. Ooh. Now you're talking my language. He throws the keys to his truck on the table. She's seen better days, but she can still pull a tree trunk out of the ground. Nope. I... Myself and everyone else at the table immediately folds. Deal the cards, Bry guy. Hmm. Are you guys sure you wanna? Uh... You heard the man. Deal. Ooh. Oh, I don't know how it's gonna go. I'm so excited. <laughs> Brian deals the next round of cards. Craig stares daggers at Robert, who casually sips his whiskey. My kind of man. So I know what you might be thinking. Robert put his old workhorse up for grabs. His only mode of transportation. At times in his life, his only home. How could he be so sure of his abilities in gambling? I'll tell you right now, Craig. <laughs> I wasn't always like this. Uh -huh. I was a lot like you. Smart, talented, cocksure of my own luck, great biceps. But it didn't last long, though. I lost everything in a game of Pai Gao in the back room of a Zhen Zen tea house on what I thought was a three day business trip. Everything gone. Clothes, money, identification, you name it. Uh -huh. I woke up in a ditch near Zhaozhou Park and had to make my life new from there. It took me three years to beg, borrow, and steal my way back to American soil. And in those three years, I saw the greatest depths of human fear. Love deeper than I ever had, and lost all many more times over. Huh. Lost it all many more times.
God's honor. I've seen my own death, Craig. I know how I die. It's not like this. Oh. So let's make this more interesting. Hey. Robert produces the <laughs> deed to his house from his jacket and tosses it on the table. First of all, why do you carry that around? Oh. All I have and all I am. Are you prepared to go the distance? Damn, this is me when I get competitive and now I see why my friends and family are concerned. Oh. It's also why I'll never go to a casino. Craig wipes the sweat from his brow. He studies Robert's face intently, searching for any sort of tell that he can find. Robert casually sips his whiskey again. I... I fold. Hey. Everyone erupts. Hmm. Fine, fine. The whiskey is yours. And that's why you don't dance with the devil. I bet he was lying. He had a pretty bad hand, right? So what was it? Were you bluffing or did you have the cards? That's for me to take to my grave, fellas. Damn. I respect that, Robert. <laughs> Next week, boys? Hey. Next week. Hey. You got it. Dude. I'll be there. Mm-hmm. Sure thing. This has been very relaxing, and I sincerely doubt I will wake up in a cold sweat thinking about it tonight. <laughs> Keep working on that poker face, Lewis. We all say our goodbyes and head our separate ways. Ooh, I've Welcome. actually never played poker. You got dads. <sighs> okay. So I've done Joseph. Kind of want to do him again. I'll be honest, the three... Uh, hmm. The three I'm leaning most towards right now are Craig, Matt, and Joseph. The least... The... In no particular order. But then the bottom three would probably be Damien, Hugo, Brian. Robert? I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, nah, I shouldn't pursue you. But then other times, just like this poker one, I'm like, hmm. You seem interesting. I'm kind of down for that. Like, personally, with Igluis, I feel like Craig... Or Matt could be a better match, but I'm so intrigued by both Robert and Joseph. Oh, I'm so torn. You know what? Let's do Robert. Why not? Robert's small. <laughs> when the internet gains sentience and decides to destroy us all, you know it'll use this information against us, right? A gun. Don't talk to- <laughs> what are your turn ons? Don't talk to me. Me at work <laughs> with customers every day. What's your ideal date? Grave robbing. <laughs> At least four knives. Spent a lot of time thinking about you never really... You, you ever really look into a rabbit... You know what? Yeah, let's message you. So I think we might be going on date number two, but with a different daddy. Oh no. So yeah, no, in the comments, top... You know what? Rank your favorite dads. Tell me who you want me to, want to see me go on dates with. Tell me who you probably don't want to see me go on dates with. We'll see. Rubber was pretty nice. A little odd, but nice. <laughs> and ruggedly handsome. True. We should hang out. I type out a message to him on dad book, even though it says don't talk to me. Hey, Robert. Good seeing you again at the cookout. Want to grab a drink? I sit there for a couple seconds, hoping he'll message me back. He won't. Hey, it says that he read my message. Oh, no. I anxiously wait for a response. Uh, watch cat videos on the internet. I, stared, I start down a rabbit hole of cat videos and Robert quickly vanishes from my mind. Didn't realize how long I've been doing this, but by the time I watch maybe my 30th cat video, Robert pops back into my head. I jump back over to Dadbook to see if he's responded yet. Nothing. Well, I guess the guy's busy. I might as well make the best of my day. Oh, I can't even choose another dad? Damn. Okay. I get up, walk to the living room, then sit down, turn on the TV. Yep, making the most of my day. I feel that. Ooh, let's do game show. Ooh, family fortune's on. Alright, Nicole, your parents are in the lead and it's up to you to win it big. Are you ready? I'm ready. They hook the contestant up to a lie detector in front of her parents. Ooh, this sounds so good. 
Who is your favorite parent? Oh my god. Uh, mom? Oh, sorry. Incorrect. Next question. Yikes. Both of your parents were hanging off the edge of a cliff. Which would you save? Oh, yikes. Uh, this is terrible. I love it. Yes. I'm not a, like, reality show person, but there's a few guilty pleasure shows and things like that. Yep. I lose several hours to whatever the hell that was. Sighing, I get up and walk around the house. My stomach grumbles. Time for lunch, huh? Well, I guess it's time for old Chef Igloo to cook a gourmet delicacy. I walk over to the refrigerator and open the door. Mustard jar? Microwave- Oh, no. I refuse to microwave eggs. Kind of curious about the mustard jar, but I'm going to be normal. Make a sandwich. I'll make a sandwich in its entirety while standing there. Who needs plates? The Standwich. A lost art. <laughs> I admire my work for a second before I clumsily drop the entire thing on the floor. No! <laughs> I look around and remember that Amanda's not home. This is still good. Five second roll. Yeah, <gasps> five second roll, right? <laughs> I reassemble my sandwich, peeling pickles off the floor and putting them back where they belong, in my mouth. Yes, I will fight anybody who says pickles deserve to go in the trash. I am that person who asks for extra pickles on my burgers. Whenever my friends and family get pickles and give them to me, it, it I instantly love you. Wait, I'm a wreck. I finish my snack and walk around the house some more. Bored. When's Amanda coming home? Oh, I just remembered something. When we were packing up the old house, we found an old basketball hoop that would hang off a door. It would really bring the living room together. I wonder where I put that. Oh my god. I spent a couple minutes poking around the new place until I find it. After installing it above one of the doors in the living room, I'm ready to dunk. Come on and slam. I'll take a leap from the free throw line. From the free throw line, yeah. And rocket that sucker down the net. The crowd goes wild. And a welcome to the jam. I pull up from the three-point line, breaking ankles and sinking a fadeaway. And I forgot the rest of the words to this song. No look behind the back hook shot. Everyone's on their feet. Something, something, Space Jam. I managed to just barely defeat myself at horse before <laughs> Amanda comes home. When, yeah, then we cook dinner together. We're proud of ourselves for not even coming close to burning down the house. Afterward, Amanda and I dig into a car carton of ice cream over an episode of Chopped. Toddler Tournament, yes. What you have in front of you is a molecularly deconstructed sweet potato with a brown sugar dummy glaze with creme fraiche, of course. This is literally a jar of baby food. The toddler immediately bursts into tears. Hmm. Are we bad people for watching this? Oh my god, I love it though. Yes. After a few more episodes, Amanda goes to bed. I checked my computer one last time. Still nothing from Robert. But it said he read my message. Is he ignoring me? <sighs> Eventually I climb into bed to get some rest, but I just can't stop wondering why Robert won't message me back. <sighs> wow. Excuse me? Date complete? Not bad. How am I getting worse at this? Wait, how did I rate low on whiskey? I fucking love whiskey. I mean, okay, date complete. Woo.